that if it would be the Lord's will, that all of us would be led to some kind of a place that we might be able to settle down to raise up our families, if God should bless us with them, in relatively close proximity to each other. That, that's as much vision as we had. Just kind of an awareness of what you don't want and listening to what I've come to call the song of our own heart. It really strikes me a couple of things, that it's unusual, I think, Chris, at a, such a young age to not have children, to be in your 20s, to have that uh, values identification, to, to listen to the song of your heart. For many people, that occurs in their late 30s, their early 40s, or maybe at the birth of their first child. And so I do think some of that's a credit to the family you grew up in and the ability to have that conversation and a safe place to have that conversation. Your brothers and sisters and your family, your parents all together, being able to say the things that are most important to you and listen to one another and stir up that song so it's not just a, wouldn't it be nice, I wish, but let's pray about it. And then when you pray about it, your eyes open and you start to see the Lord leading and the clues. So it's just really a a neat trail of breadcrumbs. I think part of the legacy your parents have left in sowing seeds into you all. Kim, it absolutely is. I'm blown away, actually, because you put your finger on exactly why I believe that kind of conversation happened for us up there. It is the fruit of the spirit of the home that my folks want to reach into the fabric of who you kids each are and try to call out, try to draw out uh, what it is that you were created for, how you're knit together. And I mean, that's classic coaching language. I don't know where my parents got that from. (laughs) <laughs> but that is, in fact, how they were raised. And so, yeah, it does produce fruit. There was a, an environment in which we were encouraged to listen to the song of our hearts, to sing the song, and to dare to keep singing the song, to pursue the things that that you really desired most strongly. Because it's not just a selfish, humanistic, oh, if you can dream it, you can do it kind of a thing. It's right. trusting that, in fact, the Lord placed that song in your heart. Yeah. That's his fingerprints uh, in your in your being, or how you know whatever metaphor works for someone. And so, go ahead and call it forth, and then listen to it, and begin to try to act on it. Patrick Williams, and he talks about this new field that was beginning to emerge called life coaching. And you're utilizing questions and exploration like we do in psychotherapy, except you don't even have a template in your mind to work from in terms of the goal like a diagnostic Mm -hmm. model that says, okay, this is what health looks like, and so I'm coming in asking questions around that vision of health. Instead, a life coach, he says, is is coming in with no preconceived notion of what the answers might be to probing questions because we're just genuinely exploring questions of possibility, vision, Mm -hmm. what could be, what would you long for? What would you desire? Well, this guy was, he, he was, he was reading my mail, I think. <laughs> he, was, he was singing your song, he was actually. was singing my song. <laughs> That's exactly right. I could not shake that five or 10 or 15 minutes worth of plug. I don't remember anything else that happened at that workshop. 